Hello, I would like to demonstrate the automation ability of Symmetron for NC programming. In this example, we have some parts that are mounted to a bar stock for machining, and we have a structure of, on the levels uh, on Symmetron, we call them sets, but basically we've got the base, we've got the part, we've got platforms, and this could be set up with design standards in the shop so that this automatically comes in this way uh, or you can take the time to put those on levels uh, we've got some nice tools to make that happen pretty quickly and I also have um, I've chained around some edges here that I want to protect and I call these sharp edges so we're going to protect these edges mm -hmm. so that none of those get rounded over causing the mold to flash and I also have a set here called Z-Stop where I have just one surface that's going to help to keep the tools going down to an appropriate distance in the roughing and we'll explain that a little bit better as we go. Also I have a level for the engraving. There's the text that's going to be engraved and here's the face the engraving will be projected to. So just a little bit of organization at the beginning is going to automate our templates. So I choose apply template and I'm going to go to the inserts on a bar, the back side. Okay, so we're going to start with this side. And here's the clearance plane. Let's go to 2.5. And here's the target part. This is what it's going to uh, gouge check against. And here's the stock model. And it's going to um, assume that the raw stock is in this state. And my stock model doesn't go any deeper than this. That just is like an added insurance policy that I won't be machining into this area. And then everything's driven by levels. So I'm just going to go ahead and execute this. And Symmetron has true background calculation. So while that's calculating, I can keep working. So I'm going to change now the coordinate system to the front side. And we're going to apply another template. Okay, and this other side is going to take the stock model from the opposite direction. So there's no need to redefine the part or the stock. Now these are just um, more procedures that will uh, pick up where the other side had left off. So we're going to go ahead and calculate those. And this is real time calculation, so you can see the speed at which Symmetron is able to calculate and this is using a stock model. Many CAM systems uh, really slow down their calculation using a stock model so there's no smoke and mirrors here. So let's have a look at the first tool path and we can go to the navigator. Okay so here's a tool coming in And anywhere that you click, we'll uh, position the tool at that location. So you can see it's very efficient motions. Okay, the next. We have a half inch tool. This one is coming in and again it's looking at the stock model. So really what this becomes is like a remachine. So based on the material that was left over after this tool ran, here's the stock model. 
now this tool comes in let's change that color so you can see it a little bit better okay so this is coming in and just getting the material where the larger tool wasn't able to go it's automatic remachining based on the stock model and again this is a template um, I didn't program this block and you know save it off as a template this is a, a generic template that I use for all of my uh, bar stock inserts so this particular tool path is looking for uh, horizontal areas it's like my floor milling procedure and it doesn't give me a light bulb so there's nothing flat here for it to go in and cut so we would just delete that one because it's not needed and this one is now a quarter inch tool that's going in and doing some remachining that one is still calculating and so while that's calculating let's have a look at the other side so from the other direction the roughers are still calculating they're waiting on this one to get done but the finishers uh, didn't need to wait so let's have a look at those while the others are calculating Okay, so let's have a look at the protect sharp edges. So this is the finished procedure. And remember I told it not to roll over any of these edges when cutting to zero. So the tool is going to do a little arc off and then a little arc on in order to protect that edge and not roll potentially roll that edge based on inaccuracies of the machine movements or the cutter geometry. Up here we have a similar motion where the tool is coming up, it's lifting up a little bit, coming down the other side. So there's a little tiny lift to protect that edge. But it's not going to leave a cusp, it's just the uh, geometry of the round tool crossing over that edge that uh, ensures that it doesn't get rounded off. And our finished procedures don't waterfall. And what I mean by that is if I, if you look at the tangency of the cutter right here, this is the last pass that that tool is touching the surface. The next pass would be considered a waterfall down. And we can ask the tool not to waterfall so that you don't have to give it any extra surfaces. Now, I mentioned that I gave it a surface from the other direction. But that was for the roughing. We wanted the roughing to come down to that level. But for the finishing, we just allowed the tool contact point to determine all the different depths. So it becomes uh, very efficient for machining. In fact, let me show you this too, that based on those sets, the base and the platform are check surfaces, and only the part area is the part surface to be machined. Okay, so let's go back up now and look at the roughing from the top side. This one that was taking a little bit of time to calculate was the quarter inch tool. All right, and that could probably be uh, tweaked a little bit to be a little bit more efficient, but what it's doing is it's trying to to hit all these steps. If you look at the stock model, because of the step down, there are a lot of stair steps here that were left over. So based on the settings that my template has, it's trying to reduce those stair steps to get a little bit closer to the part. So I wouldn't call it wasted motions. It is going to better define the shape of the part across there, but being that that's a platform, uh, I don't really care too much about that. I probably should make that a little bit nicer. But still, I mean, it's not, not bad for throwing a template at it and getting a good, quick result. Okay, and then this one is the finished machining from the back side. And again, we had the same deal where the tool is only going to go down as deep as it needs to based on the tangent point of the tool's touch position.
So it's really nice. Very automated. Symmetron will also give you feedback about the minimum distance the tool needs to be out of the holder. With this particular tool, we can see that the holder has like an extension on it. And so based on the shape of the holder, if we go to the procedure and click on show execution log, it will tell me the estimated machining time and also the minimum clear length of that tool based on the holder. So it's very useful to just go ahead and apply the template and you get feedback about each tool's minimum clear length. Okay, and then from the other direction, I want you to see that I didn't include that other face. That Z-stop face is not here. The depth in which it's machining is relative only to the stock model, not to any other surfaces that are stocking that. And that's really important. So we can flip this over, you know, three or four times, and the stock model will determine how deep the machining goes. Okay, so after the one-inch tool runs, we then have a half-inch tool. Uh, that one's going to come in, and it does very little. Just uh, cuts away some material wherever it finds it. Getting a little bit closer in here. Okay, then after that, ah, this is the floor milling. So again, there's not very much flats here, so probably I would just delete this one. Uh, it's not needed. And, oh yeah, I want to show the engraving. Okay, so here's the engraving. And again, this is all done automatically just based on the levels. All the engraving was done just by picking up the um, geometry that were on those sets. And then we had remachining. The remachining is really nice. This is all generated automatically. So here we got an eighth inch remachine, uh, one sixteenth remachine, and a one thirty second remachine. Okay, so while we're waiting for these uh, ruffers to finish up, let's go ahead and program the holes on the bottom of the block. So to do that, we're going to need another coordinate system uh, facing the right direction. Alright, activate that one. And then we're going to Go to automated drilling. Alright, so we automatically it picks the surfaces, or, or the holes rather, uh, that can be drilled from that direction. So we go to the group manager, we box pick those, and then we go to auto fit, check and see where it's looking at. Should be okay. Let's change the location. Okay, so for two out of two groups, we found an appropriate sequence. Save and calculate. Alright, and then let's uh, go to the navigator. Okay, so here we do the center drilling. And it keeps the center drill in the spindle, even though those holes are different 
size holes. It's going to optimize the tool changes. And then it does the drilling. Now let's see what else we got here. We got a quarter inch semi roughing. So it's going to come in and get as much stock out of the way as it can. Alright, then this is the uh, 1 8 re machine going in there, getting a little bit closer still. This is still a semi roughing procedure. And then that's the finisher that we already looked at. And then after that, we would have the re machines. So that's it. That's all it takes to program using Symmetron.